Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Big Learn Workshop. What is Big Learn? It's Big Data Learning Resource and Network. I'm Deep Kakar. I'm just like you, the big data enthusiast, and we'll be talking about big data basics today. Okay. In the meetup, I mentioned that it's for beginners, so we'll talk about the basics of big data. But I have a use case to discuss how IBM helped Macy's achieve their goals. And also I will be sharing, there is a company which is purely based out of cloud, uh, Hadoop. Hadoop is a platform to compute big data. Big data is not a platform, it is just a term. So, and I'm not talking about service, services based company, it's a product company which is on Hadoop. So there are like entrepreneurs, they are working in this big data domain and they are working on Hadoop. So here's a sheet for big data. In one minute, what, you, what kind of data and how much data you generate on internet. So we are talking about 48 hours of YouTube videos. And also we are talking about uh, Facebook Tumblr blogs, like 27,000 <coughs> posts on Tumblr. So yes, we'll talk about that. Okay, so big data basics. How many of you know about big data, like the definition of big data? Right? Yeah, it's kind of boring, right? I will not get into that. <laughs> so it's a large set of complex data. I will not talk much about that. It is large set of complex data. There are three V's. Everyone is aware of these three V's. Volume, velocity, and variety. Volume, we'll talk in the next slide. Velocity, one of my friend, he told me that whatever data we used to generate in 24 hours, now we generate in two hours. So that kind of velocity we are talking about. Also variety. There are multiple devices, multiple databases, different kind of databases, but broadly there are two varieties. One, structure, another is unstructured. So what is structure basically? Remember you, we used to have the forms, first name, deep, last name, kakar, and <coughs> gender, male. So for each field, we have an answer. So that is structure. Unstructured is your Facebook comments, your Twitter tweets. There's a comment field and you enter anything there that is unstructured how to read that how to make sense of it so variety wise there are two broad categories structure and unstructure in IBM marketing material they have added one more V which is veracity <clears throat> that veracity is the inaccuracy in the data decision makers they want exact data like the accurate data but now IBM has this algorithm in their infospheres and info sites and streams that they can find out that what data is correct, accurate, and what is not. My friend at Serendio, he told me there is another V, <coughs> which is value. Big data by itself is nothing. Until unless you don't uh, compute it, uh, make sense of it, and create value out of it. So there are five Vs. Do you think there is any other V? I think this is enough <laughs> of the theory. <laughs> okay, now let me talk about the volume. From start of time till 1985, we used to write on papers, on stones in Stone Age, right? But in 1995, around that time, we started using digital, uh, uh, digital we started digitalizing our data started writing the data on uh, information on analog devices, right? At that time, corporates, they started using it, and this, they basically uh, started writing employee details and sales transactions, okay? So what happened? In 1985 to 2003, there were only five exabytes of data. But then people started generating data on social media websites, they started uploading videos, they started commenting on posts and photos, and the data increased by 2.7 zettabytes, which is 10 raised to power 7 kilobytes. And what is the prediction? <clears throat> now in two years, by end of 2015, 
the data will be three times of all the data that we have generated. Why? Because of machines and sensors. What kind of machines? What kind of sensors, really? Let me share a story with you. My travel day. My boss asked me to book a ticket and go to the client side. It was in the end moment, I had to book the ticket. I went on my favorite travel site and I was not able to log in. I waited for a couple of minutes because I knew that the information has already been sent to the system administrators of that website and I will be able to log in in a minute. And I was able to. So that was the data that that system generated. Second, I uh, ordered the taxi and I was able to see from where the taxi is coming and coming to my place. And in half an hour the taxi came, I boarded and I asked him, you know, how I was able to see your location from where you are coming and everything. He said GPS. So we have this GPS device, right? And he said there's another device in the taxi that records driving habits and also the fuel efficiencies, like how long the taxi was idle, what route he took, and whether he, he was safe, fast, slow, everything. So that data was going to the taxi company. And why they were collecting that data? So that they can further share it with insurance companies to take the discounts because the driver was a safe driver. Then we reached to the airport. It was crowded. I got down from the taxi and I started walking. Fitbit, my watch, health watch, started recording the data. How many steps I have taken, my heartbeat and all those things. And it was logging the data in, in the cloud, somewhere in the cloud. So the sensors, they're recording the data. So I'm talking about machines and sensors, right? I don't need to tell flight is a data center for information. Black box sends data every second to the servers on the ground. So velocity, throttle, temperature, everything. I reached to the client side. They gave me uh, the pass. I swiped it. My client got to know that I am in, uh, now I'm inside the building. And also there were sensors in the elevators, like how long the elevator was on, at one particular floor. I realized the temperature inside, the temperature controller is also uh, uh, sending the data to the electricity company. And vending machines, they have RFIDs these days. So what is the inventory level right now? They count and they send to the local server. So I'm talking about these all are machine data. I'm not even talking about manufacturing clients, the big machineries. GE has given a name to those manufacturing <coughs> clients, the data generated by manufacturing clients. It's industrial internet. If you will search with industrial internet online, it is just like internet of things, the industrial internet. It's machine data purely, how you can make value out of it. Now, we have lots of data, complex, big data. How to process it? Do you think it is easy for someone to go manually and compute and count and find out the errors and all those things? It is not easy. So what to do? If we have one terabyte of data, how to compute it? Now I'm going to tell you two technologies which are behind Hadoop. Hadoop is a platform that computes big data. So if you have one terabyte of data, divide that data into smaller chunks and store in different systems. And these <coughs> systems could be commodity hardware, not the expensive servers. And process the data parallelly. It will be fast and it will be easy. So distributed system and parallel processing are the two technologies behind Hadoop. How to compute big data, basically. Now, I will. there is a math problem now. I'm sure you will <coughs> be able to answer. We have a system, and that system has four input-output channels. Each channel has 100 megabytes per second can access. Each system can access 100 megabytes per second. How much time will it take to read one terabyte of data? Do the math. I will tell you, one terabyte of data is 1024 multiplied by 1024 megabytes. And uh, if we convert this particular unit, each channel, 100 multiplied by 60, it will be 
6,000 megabyte per minute and then four input output channels so 24,000 megabytes per minute <coughs> right if we divide it by 1024 into 1024 divided by 24,000 it takes 45 minutes to just read one terabyte of data but if we have 10 systems that one terabyte of data is divided into 10 systems and we are parallelly accessing them it takes just <coughs> 4.5 seconds so that is the power of Hadoop how to compute big data now let me share the company that is using Hadoop every day and that is the model have you heard about cloud what is your score not that high <laughs> uh -huh. what is yours uh, I just heard about it but I haven't used it okay anyone here Amit I haven't used it okay so what it, exactly it is it is standard for influence it measures what is uh, like how much you're engaging your customer or <coughs> your friends your connections so what it does you create account on cloud it asks you to connect all other social media uh, pro your social media profiles with cloud and it it has an algorithm computes everything and then gives you a score <coughs> in this case this guy's score is 64 mine is 60 it is very hard to get to 60 believe me and what exactly they are counting let me give you a little bit idea when you're connecting Facebook it reads uh, how many <coughs> friends do you have how many times you have posted something how many likes are there on the post and how many uh, uh, comments are there on the post in case of LinkedIn they look for how many connections do you have and how many recommendations you have in case of Twitter obviously your followers and your retweets in case of uh, Foursquare they check uh, how many times have you checked in and how many times you have posted the tips whether the place was good not and all those things so now try to understand this is a lot of data per user I, I have believe me I have connected 11 accounts into cloud maybe that's why I have 60 score because it is going everywhere and crawling and everything so, so let me give you a number they have 400 million scored users and they receive 12 billion signals per day so like per, per like per comment I'm just counting a signal so 12 billion we just did a math for one terabyte but it's like 20 billion signals per day they are using distributed system and they are using parallel processing just guess how much time it takes for them to process this 12 billion signals per day any guesses what's the, what's the question so question is that they receive 12 billion signals per day okay how much time it takes for them to compute this score because every time it, it, it needs to go through the Hadoop system and uh, do the computing and the algorithm and then finally give a score so every day you go there you will see the different score <coughs> basically because on because like how much you have against your users it's, it takes I don't know this is too low <laughs> so it takes like one hour to compute everything in a day and they update the score so I think they are updating it like on 24, 24 hours basis and it takes just one hour for them. I have insider information that they have in a Hadoop cluster, they have 600 systems and I'm sure most of them will be commodity uh, because in Hadoop that is the beauty of it. You don't need all the big high-end servers. So can I ask some questions on Hadoop itself? Yeah, yeah, sure. General. It is not in the scope but yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to understand. Um, so you mentioned about Hadoop allows you to distribute the big data into smaller chunks and then you can do parallel processing. So the way I look at it, if the data that you are distributing across different chunks, if they don't have any interdependencies between them and if I send any request or any data, it is going only to one server, whoever is managing that chunk. Now it all depends on the performance of that server, how quickly he can process it and send the message information back to me. So let me tell you, uh, uh, maybe I will uh, just in one minute I will explain. So we need one high-end system mm -hmm. that has all the metadata. 
all the information about how many systems do we have and where the data is going. Mm -hmm. So one terabyte of file will go to different systems. Correct. So that information that one high-end server has. Correct. Okay. After that, for computing, it is about it. It starts a MapReduce kind of computation. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And it sends uh, maps to uh, the commodity server, uh -huh. and they do the reducing. So now, as per their configuration, they do the reducing, uh -huh. and then combine all the results, and finally the result comes back basically. So yes, you're right, they're commodity hardware, but they get very limited tasks to do. So the whole task is also distributed. It is divided into small, small, small chunks, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So next is Macy's. Macy's is losing <coughs> customers because of calls, and especially for especially women shoppers. They don't buy their clothes from Macy's. They go to Macy's for home goods, but <clears throat> because they have coupons and everything, they go to Kohl's to buy women clothing. So that area, they are basically losing their business. So then Prosper Insights and Analytics, they did a research. They spoke to 6,000 Macy's shoppers and ask them why you don't buy women clothing from Macy's and why you're going to Kohl's. 84% said that we care about price and also 55% that we are motivated by coupons. Yes, Macy's also sending coupons, but maybe they are not timely. They are not relevant. Maybe Kohl's is quite active. That's why. So what should Macy's do? There's a need for them for customer engagement and retention. They should timely send promotions and relevant promotions. So that is what they're looking for. But what should they do? Where the big data is coming? So now we are discussing the use case of big data. There are three things that they need to do. One, they need to find out the customer buying behavior. What kind of preferences, even products, color, many things, what exactly they're looking for. If the customer is on Macy's website, how long the customer is staying on that page. And you know, even Macy's is these days counting if you have added that product into the cart and then removed it. And why you have removed it. So these kind of things, so the customer behavior. Next, they need to find out the customer sentiments. These days, if you're not liking a product, you go to Macy's.com and write that I'm not liking it or liking it. You go to Facebook, Twitter, you write blogs about why you're not liking it. If it is uh, expensive or it is not, quality is not good, everything. So you have to find out what customers are saying. Last, the research. Research data about the demographic, what is the local buzz. Uh, inside, <coughs> prosper insights, you know, very good information uh, they, they gave to us. One is that <coughs> women who, are, who spend who spends $55 per month, they go to Kohl's sh to shop. And women who, spends, uh, uh, who spend $76 per month, they prefer buying from Macy's. So these kind of data also is important. So they should incorporate the research data too. So then what IBM did? So I, 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 IBM did like, uh, they took three steps. One is customer info at brand touch point, what exactly uh, the brand touch point is, that if customer is going to store, they should record the data, what they are buying and all those things. And mm -hmm. if the same customer is buying online, so it should be consolidated one place. It is not like there is different systems and they are not collaborating. So they will not get the exact what Edith is looking for or Ruth is mm -hmm. looking for, right? So for women clothes, they should be knowing, okay, Edith is going to one location and what kind of product she saw or bought and online what kind of product she saw and bought, right? So that kind of information, so all touch points. Second step was real-time side info at customer level. So when Ruth is going on Macy's.com, so what product she's uh, finding in interesting, uh, colors, preferences, uh, everything. And last but not the least, what kind of feedback you're putting on, on that product review. So these three information. Now, let me put it into Hadoop. 
and specifically IBM has info infosphere right infosphere big insights streams that kind of tools let me tell you how it works so whenever you're going online and you're doing some kind of shopping there are cookies you have you heard about cookies not the sweet ones but so, so these these cookies have all the data like on which page you landed uh, uh, how much time you spent on home home page how, how much time you spent on one particular uh, product page so that kind of information how many clicks you made where and all those things so that is click stream log files then Macy's has your user files they have all your information you uh, sometimes uh, buy their cards credit cards right sometimes uh, you just go online and buy things so they have your user information your mail your gender uh, your age uh, all those kind of information and product files the specification of the product which you can see online or in store what is the color uh, size uh, even what is the SKU number the specific ID for that product they incorporate all these files into Hadoop. so IBM tools infosphere big insights all tools have Hadoop in the backend they don't publicize, but Hadoop is in, in the background. They add everything there, then they compute everything, map reduce and all those things. And finally, this is basically, uh, those technical things are not for this session, that's why I'm not discussing. Maybe we'll, we'll discuss offline, uh, maybe in the next session, which is code technical. So what kind of information they got out of it after combining everything? One thing is that what is the origin for the visitors? If they are from India, from China, from US, from where? Even in US, from which states they are coming onto Macy's website. Okay. Then, on what are the hot products? They went to which page, and they were staying on which page for a longer period of time, those kind of data. So one, two, three products. And also, they can uh, join and see the results based on the gender. Like male went to this particular pages, uh, women went to these particular pages, these kind of products and all those things. So, so, and, and also they can group it by age. Like people from 18 to 25, they are liking these products and those products. But what is the fun in finding these analysis? Any guesses? Like even if they will get this information, what they will do? They'll change the product based on what they want. Like okay. Based on the demography or... They will buy ads buy and show me the products that I looked at when I'm on other sites. Yes. And, and anything else? Because... They send messages <clears throat> that are appropriate to what that... Yeah, yeah, great. So basically, you know, uh, decision makers will get this information from Hadoop, right? But again, we are talking about value. How much value you can create. So what they will do is, they will send recommendations. So Edith point. They will send recommendations based on the uh, whatever pages you have been to. And also they will send the gift coupons, discount coupons. That okay, fine, hey, this is available, this is available in this color, uh, holiday season is coming, weekend is coming, buy, go there and disperse this much discount, that this and that. So they will, they will recommend and they will send the um, gift coupons to that specific consumer. So ye this particular slide is the, to understand consumer behavior, okay? Now we will understand what is the next level what is the future of creating the value but before that let me tell you as for Macy's they are saying that uh, after tying up with IBM within two years they the sales has been increased by 10 percent I don't know whether they whether they're talking about quarterly sales or yearly sales that that was not specified but they are saying that it has been increased but I have a number that in 2000 11 uh, the online sales for Thanksgiving and Black Friday together was 10% okay out of total sales 10% was online sales but in 2012 it was 19% but in 2013 now uh, in, in uh, November 2013 the 40% sale was from online um, deals so maybe they got some trends on the Thanksgiving 
and they sent the coupons and people bought it online on Black Friday. So that might be the case. So, so that was the result. So I thought it's an important number. But aren't online sales up across the board? Yes. So how do they contribute <coughs> to Can just, you know, more people shop online in general as opposed to the messages? Actually, they are saying because they are now active, actively uh, using the technology mm -hmm. and our Hadoop system because they are able to process data very fast, like within hours, and then they can send uh, promotions as per uh, the local buzz, as per customer behavior, and that is uh, letting, uh, basically, it is increasing, it is helping uh, increasing the sales, actually. So that's what they are saying. Yeah. yeah. They have not mentioned how much data they mm -hmm. have. I tried f uh, finding it out. They have mentioned tens of millions of terabytes. I don't understand what exactly that means. So uh, that will be interesting that how much data they are getting and then they are computing it. Okay, that is future. Predict predictive analysis. So right now we were discussing about web browsing patterns <coughs> and customer transaction data. What about you add social media sentiments and also demographic and research data? I have examples for that. So. What exactly it does, it <coughs> predicts what will be the trend, what products will be uh, popular, and then companies like Macy's, they can uh, <coughs> prepare for the demand. They can order things, they can make things available in that particular location, so that is important, so predictive. So let me give you... Out of curiosity, one thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, you mentioned that um, we have these cookies where they store all the data. Are these, are they actually sending these cookies all the way to their servers? Or is it more of when I'm clicking, because the request is going, that's how they get to know what I'm clicking. I'm trying to understand this cookie versus when I click it and the message actually goes to the their server. Which way, those cookies, they can't transfer the files. They cannot. Yes, you're right. So, since they're mentioning click stream data, uh -huh. so I think whenever you're clicking on their website, so that information yeah, is going basically so because the request is going there and then they are loading the mm -hmm. page back, right? So it is not really, they have not mentioned the web, uh, the web server uh, log files. Mm -hmm. They are saying click stream data. So I'm assuming it is purely click yeah. when you're putting it on. Because people can actually disable the cookies and that will defeat the purpose. So they need some other way to right, monitor right. So what I was discussing is, these are three uh, stores in one demographic area. A red store had one particular product, like say 12 items of one video game, okay? And they were on the shelf, Thanksgiving came or any particular holiday came, and, and within minutes they were gone. In the old times, it was advantage for that red store because people, uh, you know, think that the store is good, they have like 12 items and maybe next time they will have again, so I should go and uh, pick it up. So they get the traction. But now things are changing. The other, another one, now it is blue, it was green before. So the blue one, blue store, <coughs> they said, you know, we should do something. Put technology into picture and we should have all the predictive analysis and you know, what kind of products are famous and all those things. So the example we discussed before, <coughs> they used Hadoop, big data, research data, social media sentiments. I, I will send you how to how to calculate the sentiments, that is very important, very interesting. And also the web pattern and everything. They calculated that this particular product is very important. And instead of having 12 items, they bought 50. And they made sure that it is available for at least uh, 50 people or as many people uh, it, it will be uh, available to. But <clears throat> what was the result? They made sure that we have right product, right thing, on right channel. So it is not only in store, but also they made it available online. And they became number one store. So now Red st st uh, Store is not, Red Mart is not great, but the Blue Mart is now successful because of these technologies. So they have product available online and in store. Mm -hmm. And how they got, they got to know the local bus they got to know if people are, say, video game, people are liking Call of Duty. So yes, we should have many of them. So that's how. But that is not really intelligent thing that they have done, right? There should be more to it. They, do, they did something more interesting. 
they found out those people <coughs> that pre-order things. So even though the video game will come in March, they sent emails and text and to, to those guys saying that, hey, there, is, uh, there will be a discount if you will pre-order 15%. So even if it is not available in the market, they got the pre-order sales. So they found out those guys who, who have done pre-orders in the past, so they reached out to them and they increased their sales. So that is predictive analysis. Finding out the trend and making sure that you're reaching out, engaging your customers and sell them even the product is not available. So that is a key, right? Any questions here on that predictive analysis? You know, it is not that easy. <coughs> it is not uh, just one slide. Believe me, there are companies they are only and only working on predictive analysis. It is uh, they basically use big data science. They, they they have data scientists who are PhD guys. They understand industry um, in and out. They know uh, technology in and out, and they know statistical models and um, many kind of modeling. So it's just not that easy. But as a concept, it's very important and it's that easy. Yeah. Now, how to find out sentiments? So for example, any, any movies is uh, coming in the market, it is about to be released, right? How you will find out whether people are really anticipating <coughs> that movie. So before and after the movie is released, whether they are really liking it. So, so that is the case study, okay? How, how will you find out? Yes, the data you will get from Twitter, Facebook, blogs, forums, uh, many, many, many other uh, websites. Okay. <coughs> so let's discuss, you're getting the data from Twitter. Okay. So we ingest the data into Hadoop. So these are Twitter tweets. Flume, these are the tools basically in, in Hadoop. Flume is tool that <coughs> uh, get the data, unstructured data from web and put it in HDFS. And HDFS is Hadoop distribution file system. I told you, right? Distribution system. So big data is coming and it is storing in different small, small, small chunks. Uh, if the data is structured, then we use another tool, which is Scoop. The so Scoop is, I think, combination of SQL and Hadoop. So they merged it together and made it Scoop. So Scoop is the data for structure and Flume is for unstructured data. It, it puts in SDFS. Now the data is there in SDFS. So what to do now with that data? <coughs> Define. As soon as the data is in SDFS, it converts unstructured data into a tabulated form, which is Edge Catalog. It's Edge Catalog, another it's a, uh, name of the uh, database. So it's <coughs> tabulated form so that you can go and do uh, some SQL queries, run SQL queries on it. Right, so also it extracts some fields, like what is the comment, uh, uh, what is who is the user, IP address, and all those things. You know, whatever is coming from the web. So that kind of information, and it, it, and it makes a tabulated form. Next, now Hive is a tool to write SQL queries and run SQL queries. So Hive is uh, the tool that goes into the HDFS, runs SQL queries. Uh, compute everything and give you the result okay so what happened here in hive we said go and read the comment word by word <coughs> and also there is a file in hive we have mentioned a file we mentioned that these are the words which are positive sentiments if these are the words you will find these are negative sentiments these are the words for neutral uh, kind of response. So it goes and basically count each and every, reads each and every word and counts how many positive sentiments, negative sentiments and neutral sentiments are there in one comment. Yeah. Does it translate foreign language? Uh, right now I think it is for English, but it will uh, be able to translate uh, other languages that can be written in English, I'm sure. Yeah, because see, thing is you have to... Uh, uh, put everything in the text file for the positive and negative sentiments. If there is a tool that can read, say, for example, Mandarin language, right? I think it will be successful. I'm not sure. 
I only worked on the English language. Uh, but, but it is a very valid question, actually. Because if the data is in, say, Mandarin, and we have a text to match in Mandarin, <coughs> so whether it will... Can you write Mandarin in English? Just asking. I don't know Mandarin. Okay, no, any language, Vietnamese into English. No, right? Because we can write Hindi into English, that is for sure. We can write Hindi into English, right? Yeah. yeah. Vietnamese. Oh, it's complicated, right? Vietnamese and I think Thai, even Thai, Thailand also. Repeated. Yeah. So, sorry, I don't have answer to that, but it's a valid question. Uh, definitely, I will get back to you on that. So, at least Hindi can be written in English language, so that we can match. Not sure about uh, uh, other languages. You can easily write tools uh, and use dictionaries for that particular language right? and convert it and yeah. then use this. It will be easy actually. Yeah. So because not it is not like in, in uh, China or Vietnamese they are not using Hadoop. They will be using, right? Yeah, so exactly. I'm sure and they will be finding out the they sentiments. Tools, yeah. So so answer is answer is yes, I'm sure, but how I will figure it out. Yeah. So uh, so we find out that this particular tweet is positive, negative or neutral. So once we have that number, the next step is uh, once we have uh, that match, then the next step is to visualize it using any BI tool. Could be IBM's Big Insight, could be Domo, could be uh, uh, even Splunk does that, even uh, Datamir does that. There are many tools actually in the market, hundreds of tools for BI. Yeah, go ahead. What in case of the three disciplines? Yeah, so it is sarcastic. I don't think Haroop has any mean to find out that. Yeah, that is one tweet will be, uh, will keep, will be giving, but, but obviously, or like, for example, if there are 100 tweets positive, so there will be like one or two sarcastic, like not all 100, right? Because we, we are talking about like millions, millions of rows of data. So I'm assuming that uh, they, they assume that it will be like very minor sarcastic ones. They don't even count. They say, okay, fine, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, in, the, in the system. So they cannot do anything. So yeah, you are right actually, but there is sarcastic ones. So it will be uh, tough, but we are not talking about four or five tweets. We are talking about million rows of tweets actually. So, so it will be fine, even if they are, like if you add one in the infinity, then it's still fine, right? So uh, then use BI tool and find out uh, if the reaction is good or uh, not. You can find out after and before the release. You can find even the one minute on intervals, one minute intervals, for example, when the audience is standing in the line. And also, when they saw the movie and then coming out, they're tweeting all the time, right? And on the Facebook and all those things. So even you can find out whether they liked or not, what, what was the anticipation before and after. And obviously you can uh, do it by cities. So how it will help? If they have to do urgent marketing uh, uh, decision they have to take, or they have to do some distribution, so they can uh, do that. Also, if the reaction is positive and positive in certain areas, so they can plan marketing and plan for the next movies of like Gravity and Iron Man and animation movies accordingly, basically. So that data is important, how people are reacting to that particular sentiment, right? So this is uh, the last slide I have. And my future workshops. Next is uh, getting started on Hadoop. It is core technical how to install the cluster, whole cluster on Amazon Web Services and how to configure it. That is in Serendio on 13th. And uh, then I will have how to compute sentiments in Hive. Uh, in the live, we will have the real set of data. And also HBase and Zookeeper, they are the databases. Once Hadoop computes the data, it, <coughs> it needs to store somewhere, right? So HBase is that database where it stores. So all the information will be there on meetup.com slash Big Learn. Again, Big Learn is big data, learning resource, and network. Thank you so much.